Dark Soul. Dark Soul. Dark. Welcome back to the Gaming Backlog, the show where you'll never have any idea what I'm going to talk about until I talk about it. Today on the Gaming Backlog, I took a look at a small indie game made a few hours ago called Dim Personification, where the fun is found in getting your shit kicked in. God damn it! I had started this game back in 2021, where I had planned to make a video on it with a friend, but some, uh, difficulties prevented that from happening. There's, there's a f***ing dragon that appears. <laughs> Jello, go straight, go straight. <laughs> so now it's back on the backlog, and today, I intend to The first thing I'd like to talk about is the gameplay, which is boring. It's pretty boring. This is the reason why I stopped playing the game back in 2021. I will now show you a clip of the main gameplay loop of Dark Souls. Walking, sometimes fighting, walking again, another enemy, more walking, does this look fun to you? It doesn't help that this game is super easy. As long as you know how to effectively dodge enemies, no enemy can really pose a challenge. And it's even more apparent with the bosses, you all have super easy tells that are honestly all a cakewalk. But of course, keep in mind that I'm speaking to you as someone who is a fucking idiot. This game is a masterclass of design. Every boss, every enemy, the level design, it's all made specifically to make you feel like all the odds are stacked against you. Every enemy can kill you if you're not careful, and it forces you to play the game in a very strange way, which rewards smart thinking and even better reflexes. But of course, back in 2021, I didn't really understand this game. The only joy I found were in the bosses, which after the second boss were really lame to me. And while we playing the sections of the game that I played back in 2021, I felt the same way. I was bored out of my mind and I felt like an invincible god. Even this guy who scared the shit out of me the first time. He, he's a little menacing. He's a little menacing. Became my sled after only a few attempts. Get fucked. Is that it? But something happened. I changed my mind about all of this. I would like to go back. <laughs> you, you're nothing. You're nothing. <laughs> just like the Abyss Watchers, this man was he's just standing there menacingly incarnate. But after only a few attempts, once again, this guy became my personal. Hey, hey, wh what's, uh, what's, uh, what's, uh, why is the music getting louder? Why is the, the music getting louder? Why? <laughs> All of that confidence I had earlier vanished immediately. Just like my dad. But I was pretty sure, just like every other boss, I'd beat this guy in a few more tries. Maybe a few more. Maybe like two more. Like one more try. Wow. Alright, this guy is bullshit. I attempted and failed to kill this man for two hours straight. I was losing my fucking mind. I genuinely thought I was missing something because he felt impossible, but it was just a genuine skill issue. But eventually, eventually, Attempt after attempt, it happened. I rage quit. But I came back a few hours later and achieved full gamer mode. A full state of perfect calmness where your heart, mind, and soul are all a part of the game. This is a type of mental state only really seen in competitive or very difficult games and Pontiff Sullivan made me realize that. This moment here is when I realized what made the Soulsborne Seki Ring series popular. Oh my god, suck my fucking balls! Pretty easy boss, gonna be honest. <laughs> when all of the odds are stacked against you, it feels really cool when you beat that mofo's ass. Barack Obama. I'm slightly scared. Whenever there's a cutscene, I usually get my ass handed to me, like, two seconds later. Two seconds later. Oh, my ass! The only negative I have with this game, which is more of a personal problem because I had to play this game for long periods of time for the video, is that this game is not fun to play for long periods of time. Because in a game where dying is a quintessential part of the experience, eventually you're gonna get pretty sick and tired of dying. This is especially bad when you lose all your souls, which are basically your experience points in this game. These souls are used to level up your health, defense, attack strength, endurance, so magic, alcohol, intelligence, 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 attention, spans, tenacity, body weight, confidence, hair life beauty, alertness, so See, when you die, all of your souls are lost, and to get them back, you need to get back to the area where you died, but at any point before retrieving your souls, you die, all of your souls 
are lost! And depending on when the last time you spent your souls was, you either lose a few minutes of progress or a few hours of progress. You motherfucker! No! Oh! It never hurts less when I lose all my souls. It's like getting robbed, but in a video game. The That's threat of losing your souls also instills real fear in the player, and it made me extremely afraid and paranoid of everything. Of course, this is intentional. And it's honestly really cool how vulnerable this game makes you constantly feel. And I can appreciate the game mechanic a lot more after the fact over when I actually lose all of my souls. I'll see y'all in two, two seconds. A little slow. <laughs> I was a little slow at dodging that one. This game honestly feels like two games in one for me. One game being explorer time and the other being bossy time. Bossy time is easily the more interesting of the two, and this is exemplified by the composers for this game who go fucking crazy. You see, in explorer time, there is no music. It's just ambient noise and the sound of monsters in the distance. And in contrast, bossy time has some of the most terrifying music I've ever heard in my entire life with the easiest example to talk about being Bort of Boreal Valley. Even if you've never played Dark Souls before, you know what this song is. The song starts with a soft string melody that gently lulls you into the atmosphere and mindset of the monster you're about to face. The mindset, of course, being bloodlust. The song keeps up this ominous tone for around two minutes. But as the fight goes on and you start to learn more of his attack patterns, the music suddenly becomes a lot more confidence boosting than ominous. You slowly whittle down his health and everything seems to be looking in your favor. And as you become more confident, the music becomes louder and louder as you gain full control over the battle here. As the boss's theme starts to feel like your own theme, the music fades. Phase two. Everything changes. Vort is no longer just a sitting duck waiting to be killed. He's fighting back with all of his strength, fucking charging at you and jumping across the battlefield. His attacks become a lot more violent and unpredictable, and the music reflects that turn in Vort really well. This is how you tell a narrative through gameplay, and it doesn't stop there. Almost every single boss in this game has badass music that plays throughout. Every boss track reflects the boss's mental theme super well, with some even having two versions, one for phase 1 and one for phase 2, which makes the music louder with more opera and more instruments to really heighten the tension of the new phase of the boss that you're gonna have to learn. And as the music heightens, so do your emotions, and you start to lose control over the fight. You start to make irrational decisions, and you go from completely dominating the battlefield to sucking giant floppy cock on the battlefield. But as you learn more about phase 2, you find more opportunities to attack and are able to effectively dodge each attack perfectly. The music once again becomes triumphant as you strike the final blow and all that tension that was being built up slowly releasing as the music subsides. Or alternatively, you get blue balls. Don't look at his health bar! And that's dim personification, a ball-crushing ecstasy rush of a game where the fun is truly found in. 